Hey coders, Chris here with episode 7 of how to build a shopping app. In the previous lesson, we had implemented an add to cart button on the product detail page. Today, we're going to put a checkout button right here in the upper right hand corner so that people can actually pay for their items and check out. So we're going to start by diving into Xcode and just adding that checkout button in the upper right hand corner. It's actually pretty simple. So in the view did load of the master view controller.swift, we're going to create a new button. So let's call this the checkout button equals UI bar button item. And it's got an initializer like here, title, style, target, and action. So this is going to let us specify the text, which I'm going to put as checkout. Style is UI bar button item style dot plain and the target is self and the action is going to be checkout so the target and action is basically specifying which method of which object should we call when this button is tapped so because I'm going to create a function in the master view controller called checkout uh, so the target is self as in this object and um, the method name is checkout. So I'm going to go down here. Uh, I'm just going to put it right up here. And we can use this notation to create a section. Checkout methods. So what happens when you use this syntax right here is that when you pull this down, you're going to get this little header here when you look at all your functions. So it's a good way to organize your class. So we can say func checkout. And inside here, we're going to create an order, process the payment. Okay, and but before we can do that, we need to specify some shipping and enable some gateways in our dashboard. So I showed you guys this Forge dashboard in the second lesson of the series. Uh, so if you go here under advanced and under shipping, you can see that I've added a shipping method. So all you need to do is click this green button and create a shipping method. But what's important is to remember this slug. Okay, so that's going to be the identifier that we pass into the call uh, to specify to use this shipping method. And second of all, if you go to gateways, I've enabled a dummy gateway here for our testing purposes but if you were doing this live you would actually add the integration details for your select gateway and then hit the switch to enable it now we have the details that we need in order to make a checkout call we look at the API reference under checkout and pass a cart to checkout you can see the URL that we're going to hit and the parameters that we're going to pass in so we're going to need some customer information, the shipping method to use, which is the slug that I told you about, uh, the gateway slug to use. And let me show you that actually under this column, this middle column, you can see the slugs for all the gateway and for the dummy gateway, the slug is just dummy. So that's what we're going to be passing in. Uh, and we need the bill to address and the ship to address. So for the purpose of this demo, I'm not going to create all of the user interface elements to capture all of this data from the customer. But essentially, if you were doing it, it would be a bunch of text fields and labels so that the user can enter in their customer information, their billing address, their payment information like credit card and stuff like that. For this demo, we're going to hard code all of that data. Okay, so let's go back into Xcode and just create this checkout method. So here I'm going to create the order data. Actually, I'm going to write hard code the order data in a real app. You would gather this data from the user using a bunch of text fields and labels. So I've actually got this order data pre-done. I'm just going to copy and paste it here and I'm going to explain to you what these fields mean. So here we have a constant named order parameters and this is a dictionary. So you can see here as NS object, any object. So we have a customer key and the value is another dictionary with a couple of key value pairs, first name, last name and email that represents the customer. Next, we have the shipping key, and the value is free shipping because that is 
in my dashboard here, the slug for my shipping method, the only one I've got, is actually free dash shipping. So that's why I've specified that here. The gateway is dummy, like I showed you before. And the build to is another dictionary which contains a couple of key value pairs, namely first name, last name, address one, address two, city, country, or county, sorry, country, uh, postcode, and phone. And if the shipping address is the same as the bill to address, all you need to do is specify the bill to key as the value of the ship to key. So those are the order parameters that we're going to pass into the call that we're about to make. So in order to make that call, we say molten dot shared instance dot cart dot order with parameters. And for the parameters, we're going to pass in these guys right here. So let's say order parameters and it has two callbacks. So let's expand the success callback first. It's got one response parameter. I'm just going to call that response dictionary and we're going to fill in some code here. Once the order is successfully created, then we actually process the payment uh, and there's failure. So there's two parameters for this guy. And here I'm just going to print create the order I'm going to put a breakpoint there okay so if the order was successfully created what we have to do is get the order ID of the order that was created because we need that in order to pass it into the, our next API call which is this one process payment for an order okay so first of all we're going to capture the order ID if we go back to the reference document uh, this was the call we made to create the order and under result and under the ID field we have the ID of the order that was created so we're going to grab that so we're gonna say let order ID equals response dictionary as NS dictionary and we're gonna cast it as an NS dictionary so that we can use this method value for key path and for the key path, we're going to pass in result.id. And this is going to come out as a string. Okay, so if let the, let's just call this an OID. If it was able to retrieve an order ID, we're going to need to process the payment now. But again, if this were a real app, you're going to need to capture that information from the user in a series of text fields. So here, we're going to hard code the credit card details. In a real app, you would gather this from the user in a form. So let's go back. Here, I have this data as well. Let me paste it here and let me explain to you what's going on here. We have a constant named payment parameters and this is a dictionary. And inside that dictionary, we only have one key pair. So the key is data and the value is a dictionary. And that dictionary has the key value pairs for the credit card information. So the number, expiry, date, and the code at the back. So these parameters are what we're going to pass into the API call. So we're going to say molten dot shared instance dot checkout dot payment with method and the type of payment we're going to make is a purchase so that's just that string there for the order this is the order ID so we're going to put OID and for parameters we're going to put the payment parameters and lastly there's a success callback and a failure callback so we're going to open up the success callback Let's call that response dictionary. And inside this code here, we're going to display a message to the user that checkout was successful. In the failure callback, there's two parameters, response dictionary and error. And here we're going to just write, could not process the payment. We're going to set a breakpoint there in case it hits that point. Okay, so 
that's all you need to do to process the payment for the cart. In here, the payment has already been processed, so all we need to do is display an alert to the user. We're actually going to go back to the detail view controller to just copy the code that we had here to display an alert. So I'm going to copy these three lines, copy, and I'm going to paste it right here and just change the title and the message of the alert. So the title is order complete. The message is your order is complete and your payment has been processed. Thank you for shopping with us. And then next we add an OK button to that alert and then finally we present that alert to the user. Okay, so let's run our app now and see it in action. Okay, so we're missing a checkout button here. I actually forgot to add it. We created it, but we forgot to add it. So here back in the view did load of the master view controller.swift, we created a checkout button, but we didn't add it. So in order to add it, we type in self dot navigation item dot right bar button equals checkout button. Okay, so let's run it again. Okay, so now we've got that checkout button. Let me add the iMac to the cart. Okay, go back and let me hit checkout. And you can see in the console window that the calls are being made and then our order is complete and now we're done. So we go here, we can see all the calls that were being made. So this was creating the order and this was processing the payment. So now let's go back to our Forge dashboard and we can check out under the orders, manage orders, we can see the one that I just made, which is this one right here. This one right here was just another test order that I did before recording the video. So if this were a live store, you would have gotten two orders already. Now, of course, we simplified a whole bunch of things with our demo here, but I hope you can see that it's pretty simple to implement a user flow where they can browse items, they can add them to the cart, and they can check out and pay. Now all you have to focus on is the user experience for your app and making it look really slick and polished. Before we go, I actually want to show you another demo that Molten has for Swift and it has a more complete checkout flow. So let me see if I can find it here. I'm just going to go on the Molten homepage, scroll all the way to the bottom and let's see, getting started, it's under Swift. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's a Swift example app, which we are going to view on GitHub. And we are going to download this zip. I'm just going to put it on the desktop. I'm going to unzip it. So it's right now, it's on my desktop right here. And we have to, before we can actually run this project, we need to use CocoaPods to install the dependencies that the project needs. So if you go back to, go back a couple lessons where we talked about how to use CocoaPods, um, you'll know how to do this. So I'm in terminal right now. I'm going to go to the desktop, right? Go CD, iOS, Swift, and then you can press tab to fill in the rest of the uh, folder name. Press enter. Uh, now I'm inside that folder. I need to go one more folder deeper. So molten Swift example. And then here I can see the pod file. So I can just write pod install. And it's going to go ahead and read the pod file and fetch all the dependencies and download them. Okay, so now we're done. Now we can open up the XC workspace file right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and run the project. Okay, so here we go. So what we have here is a collection of products. And you can click on the tab and you can view your cart. So let's click this one right here because I know there are some products in there. And here we're looking at the products in that collection. So you click that. You're going into the product details. When you click the buy now, it's going to add it to the cart. And then it's going to bring you to the cart page. And here you can actually increase uh, and decrement the quantity of the product. And then finally, you can check out. 
And in here, it's loading the form where you can fill in your address and your country and stuff like that. So I'm not going to do this, but you can check out this demo for a more complete example of a shopping app where uh, there's actually the form for you guys to fill out the information. I hope you guys have enjoyed this series, How to Build a Shopping App with Molten. And if you did, please share it with your friends and colleagues. Use the share button below the video. Uh, please subscribe and give it a like. It really helped me out and helped this channel out. And with that, I'll see you guys tomorrow where we'll have a brand new tutorial. Bye for now. <laughs>